Hi guys. So when you are looking into the requirements, it has been in architecture. What we do is we define the requirements in two parts. One is the functional part of it, which talks about what the system does, what it is supposed to do. And there is another aspects of it, which is the non-functional requirements. What is that non-functional requirements? It talks about what the system is going to deal with. Whether it is going to sell products, it's going to buy products, it's going to uh, do a system for a particular business. So it can be insurance, it can be banking, it can be uh, anything for that matter, right? Now, whenever you are designing or doing the product or building the software, what you are going to do is you are going to define certain functional requirements. So we will take the functional requirement aside. We know the business analyst or anybody for that matter will be taking care of the full business, those who have the domain knowledge of it. So they knows that what the system is supposed to do and what it is going to deliver. So looking at that, they are going to write some business specification or the functional requirement specification and based on that what you are going to do you are going to start building this system it can be in a waterfall you can be in agile you can be in any delivery model but basically what you are doing you are going to build that system based on the functional spec or based on what business says that it should look like but what they will not say is how the system is going to perform now say for example you are building a system that needs to respond back say you are clicking on a button to buy a product now you cannot sit for 10 seconds or 15 seconds or one minute just to uh, add that product in your cart and then uh, you keep on waiting okay the next screen will come after five minutes and i will take a coffee and come back no you will not do that you want a synchronous call to happen immediately right on that spot and the response should come back and you cannot wait for many uh, minutes in that case right so it is a fraction of seconds when the system responds back to you and tells okay you want to buy this product buy it click on this uh, buy button and you are going to get this on certain price right that is the non-functional part of it so it talks about what it deals with let 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 us move to the next section so here onwards what we are going to do is we will be only concentrating on the non-functional requirement part of it okay now when we go to the next screen let me tell what these non-functional requirements are going to cover now if you don't look into this non-functional requirement definitely when you are building a system which is on the functional requirement which has already been defined you know okay this is the certain set of functional things how the system is going to behave but what is if you have not looked into the non-functional requirement of it it happened that the system get bad reputation you sit in the system say for example you go to amazon or any kind of uh, shopping uh, kind of thing and what you do is if you are sitting for hours and uh, minutes you are not going to come back to that site again right now that is why i'm saying that the system gets bad reputation you start uh, you don't want to come back to this system to buy products there may be legal and regulatory implication which you have not taken care what is that you you don't even know that you are going to sell product in asia or you are going to sell the product in us or you are going to sell the product in the europe so you have to take care of that if you are going to sell the product in middle east or in africa you need to know that isn't it and what are the regulatory implications can you go through a banking site and is it uh, a gateway through which you have to pass and the gateway has certain amount of limitation when you hit and when you are coming back from that gateway how much time does it take so these legal things as well as the regulatory implication you need to know otherwise you will be in trouble and what happens most of the time what we have seen according to the projects which i have handled from last 20 years that the nfrs are assumed to be there people assumes okay this is how it should behave like i'm not expecting this system to behave and uh, sit for an enormous time but have you defined that have you said that it should come within five seconds it should come within two seconds is there a synchronous call you are expecting instead of an asynchronous call what i am building 
So the developer does not know the client expectation. Neither the client know what the developer is building, but they are assuming things. That is where the NFR comes into picture. Now user will start complaining. User will start immediately all the complaints and you will get a very bad reputation out of it, isn't it? So that is where the NFRs cannot be missed into. These days, there is a high chance that because most of the people we are developing from last 20 years, 25 years, so people are assuming that a lot of NFRs are already there. We, we, we should not bother about that. We are not documenting it. We will not spend money on that. Why to spend money? Because we know that the developer is building a system in uh, by making certain uh, Java technologies along with uh, some UI and in the back end some database with uh, some messaging technologies in between with some uh, uh, plugins uh, which is uh, going to talk to a different uh, Hadoop system. It is going to bring back uh, uh, reporting. There is a blockchain which is going to validate this and that. But do you know what is that? Uh, what are the non-functional requirements in this? Have you documented it somewhere? That is what this course is about. And we are going to talk in details of each and every aspects of it. If not everything, but most of the key things is what we will be discussing. Let's move to the next section.